see if you've noticed my swivel seat. In this episode of my Chevy Astro Adventure Van Build Series, we're gonna talk about this swivel seat, uh, my new Dometic electric cooler, some cool window coverings I made and uh, some curtains, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of other random things in the van here as it finally starts to come together and near completion. Okay, so this is my swivel base passenger seat. And it can be a little bit difficult to realize the merits of this, just how awesome it is to have a swivel seat. Uh, the main thing is I could just sit in this seat and have a comfortable place to sit in the van's back space here because my bed, you know, I can't really sit on top. I don't have enough headroom there. So this is the seat where I sit, you know, and I've got my computer monitor on a swivel arm over here. So it'll swivel towards me and I can sit in this seat and, you know, use my laptop. And if I want to project that screen onto the larger screen and I can do things here like, you know, video and photo editing and things. Um, Anyways, it's just a really comfortable place to sit, and this is where I spend basically all of my time in the van. Unless I'm laying down and watching a movie, this is where I sit. So this is definitely worth the money investing in the swivel seat. To install this base, I had to take out the old seat, and then I had to remove the base of the old seat that was attached to the seat here and replace it with this base. So it did require removing some of these nuts and bolts that attach the, the sliding tracks to the seats. So it was a bit of a chore to do, but it was worth the effort. And to make the seat swivel, just push back on this little lever. And watch it swivel. Now getting your hands on one of these swivel seat bases is another story. There's a guy in the Astro Safari van forums that was selling these and he made them as a, I think like a one-time thing, you know, where he got like, you know, 20 or 40 people into it or something like that. So it was worth his time to make them. And it cost 400 bucks for this after shipping and everything, but I, it was still worth it for me for the utility it provides. Um, needless to say, it might be hard to find one of these, but if you can, if you do find one of these, scoop it up. And this here is basically my fridge. This is an electric powered cooler by a company called Dometic. And it's a 35 liter capacity. It's supposed to be able to hold 50 cans, beer, soda, or whatever. This can operate as either a refrigerator or freezer or both. And it claims it can get down to temp negative seven. I usually keep it at the refrigerator level and, and don't do anything with the freezer. I keep it somewhere around 40 degrees on average. This is big enough to fit quite a bit of food. I put strawberries in here and cheese and cream cheese, you know, lunch meats. Um, salami, pepperoni, uh, whatever I get, and usually some uh, drinks down here. And uh, normally I don't have room for this because I've got so much other food down here. Another thing I'll do is get things like pizza and chicken strips and pack that out from town because they do really well in the fridge here, refrigerated, while I'm on the on the road. So I'll keep like a bag of maybe chicken strips or something in here. That's good for a couple of days out of town. And the cool thing about these Dometic coolers is that you can power them by DC. So here's your DC plug, and then it also comes with an AC plug. So it comes with the plug for DC. And for me, I've got my plug right there. So that's where I've got mine plugged in, the closest possible spot to where I keep it, which is right in between the uh, driver and passenger seat. coverings are two-sided. This is the inside and then this is the outside. This is the side that's facing out. I've chosen to make these black because this is very reflective. So if you've got all your windows lined with this stuff, the van kind of stands out. I think the van's just going to be a little bit more stealthy when it looks like it has dark tinted windows. So I've gone with 
uh, black felt on the outside of these. The first step in making these window coverings is to make a template of all the windows. So I went around with a roll of construction paper and traced out my templates. And then I laid my templates out over this roll of Reflectix. I cut the Reflectix according to the template shape. And then I've got these magnets I got from Amazon. So what I did next was I went around the perimeter of my window covering every so often and used my Reflectix tape to tape a magnet in right about, right about the edge right here because it's metal all the way along the window so I can just use these magnets to just magnetize this window covering up to the, up to the van. So I taped all these magnets on with the Reflectix tape. And next I took my black felt, laid it down over my piece of Reflectix, cut that out to shape. Uh, and then I used 3M contact adhesive. Make sure you get the high strength stuff. They actually make a, a less strong version of this stuff. So I guess you don't really want that. So spray the Reflectix down with 3M adhesive, lay down your felt and apply some pressure, some even pressure, let it dry and then you've got yourself a window covering. A magnetized window covering. Pretty cool. So these are the window coverings for the two rear windows, the side sliding door, the two front doors, and then this is for my Max fan. And sometimes some light gets through and just, you know, if it's cold out, this helps and I'll put this up when I know I'm not gonna be opening the fan. You'll notice a little arrow up here that's pointing to the top because it doesn't fit the same way if you flip it upside down, so it's slightly different. Now the windows for the front, you'll notice they've got this sort of goofy looking design up here at the top. But what this allows me to do, is just works in harmony with my vent shade outside. I can keep my windows cracked and I can turn my fan on, or even if I don't have my fan on, I can just get airflow in here. And then from the outside, it still looks like a dark tinted window. You don't even notice that the windows are cracked. In fact, you can't even tell. And then you can't even really tell. There's a window covering here. It just looks like a dark tinted window. And that's kind of the idea. So you can't tell that the window's cracked. If I put my fingers in here, I can reach into the, the van. But because of this, this is dark. And then the dark black behind it, you just can't see that. And here's a better look at it with the door open. And all I've done here is basically made these tabs. And I've just put my, my magnets here. Got one right here, one right here, one right here. And then everything inside here is kind of wasted space, essentially. Because now, yeah, I don't make fun of my crank windows. So now I can crack the windows. Air flows through here. When I'm not using this fan, I usually keep this over it. Now what this does is keeps the hot air out, the daylight out, and kind of seals this up just a little bit. Well, these are the curtains I built. And they're kind of relevant until I put up this overhead console. Before that, uh, this thing fit perfectly up here but now this is in the way and they don't really work but I want to show you what I built for the curtains anyway because it was a pretty good system I'll show you what I did with these curtains and maybe this will be useful to you and this is like an indicator rod for snow depth you just like put this out in your lawn and maybe mark where your uh, septic tank is or you know whatever and I made this little piece of oak it's got a little indent here I drilled out right on the side of it that fits pretty nicely in this piece of wood now the idea here is that this rod is routed through the, the top of the curtain all the way across and this little eyelet here. This gives it some rigidity and, and makes it makes it kind of sturdy across the span, keeps it in place while it enters this little block of wood. And that's basically the system in place. And then this end just sort of slides in place here. And that's it, you know? It's held in this way by this piece of wood and then the little eyelet. And then, you know, you remove it by just pulling it out. But this was plenty strong to keep it in place uh, when I was using it like this. 
And here I'm adding strips of Velcro to the sides of my shelves so I can attach my curtains. I'm cutting it into strips of about two inches and I'll put four strips on the face of this shelf. Next, I'll cut the curtain to length. I want a little excess to drag on the floor, just in case. And I did the same thing on this end. I just put some Velcro here and up here to keep it in place. Then here I added this, this bolt, cut off the end of it to make it a little shorter. And then I used this to, to keep it in place so there's no tension really on the, uh, on the Velcro. And then when I'm not using it, normally I would just slide the material up this way along the rod at the top and on the side. I've got a uh, piece of string here and I would just kind of tie it and keep it in place. 